All right. We should be rolling. Awesome. Uh, excited to be uh, back on here again. Um, it's been a little more sporadic the last couple last couple months. Been a busy time for me with my team. Sure. Um, you know, getting off getting off the ground here. Summer football in Ontario, and I know it's a busy time for for a lot of coaches in Ontario doing that. Um, but going to try and get back to doing more of these. And uh, something that um, you know, I really, as a guy that's currently coaching defense, not to put this you know too far out there for all my opponents, but defending bunch is one of the things that you know really I found can be a huge challenge and it's something that I didn't run a ton of like as a player like the offenses I played in didn't necessarily use it a ton and always something I'm trying to learn more about so excited to have coach Justin Chapdelaine join us uh, again coach did a great clinic uh, earlier this year on some past game stuff as well um, that I thought was great information for any level of of coaching, whether you're coaching, you know, younger kids or, or through the high school ranks and, and obviously even to the youth sport level. So thanks again for coming on to do this coach. And I got my notepad ready and if you can hear my voice. I've been coaching, but excited. to. Uh, Psychic, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Most of it's, most of it was very happy, you know, being, being <laughs> excited. Yes. Yeah, de definitely. The volume is there either way though. So Good. thanks again for doing this coach and uh, excited to hear the clinic tonight on bunch. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Coach. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. It's uh, it's always a pleasure when you, you send out the messages to to ask if I want to help out, if I want to present on something. And uh, I know that the last time that we spoke, you know, we had talked a little bit of, about certain plays out of the bunch and uh, the the bunch formation. Uh, I, I want to say it's been in my family for a long time. My father, Jacques, he has been a, a huge advocate of the bunch. And it's funny, I, I had Pat Bois. I'm going to give him a little shout out. He tweeted at me, Pat Bois is a... Uh, uh, a Quebec coach who's coached at the university level and at the stage up level. And he, uh, you know, he had tweeted out to me that he went to a clinic about 10, 12 years ago where my father had presented on the bunch and uh, he had learned a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I myself, I, uh, I kind of got into a, a bunch formations at an early age. I remember when I was at Salisbury Composite High School out in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, when I really got my first feel at three down football. And I know that we, uh, we had a lot of formations out of the bunch and I know that, yeah, it, it gave some, uh, it gave a lot of uh, stiffs to uh, our defensive opponent and it was a little bit tough for them to uh, defend that and happy to be here to do this. Happy to talk about bunch. I'm going to talk about a couple varieties of bunch as well. You know, I don't want to stick to this, the general condensed formation that we typically see. I want to, uh, I, I'm, you know, because we are up here in Canada and I am a Canadian coach, I want to show different ways that we can run. Uh, different bunch formations and what kind of movement we can use with bunch formations as well, which uh, unfortunately is not something that you'll see down south. But, uh, you know, with the exotic movements that we can do up here in Canada, it'll be it's something that's really uh, interesting to see. And uh, hopefully it's something that you guys can take away from, you know, what I'll present. And uh, honestly, I'm always available as well. Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter and Instagram. So if you have any questions as well after following uh, the live stream or even after uh, the recording, if you if you watch the recording and you have some questions, please, I, I, I'm i always available and I'm, uh, I, I love to talk ball with any kind of coach just to learn from you guys as well. You know, I, I pick up a little bit of nuggets here and there from uh, any any coach from any kind of level as well. So I'll get into it. I just I just large uh, enlarge my screen. I just want to make sure that everything's good. Uh, coach, just make sure that everything's uh, perfect right now. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. You're uh, you're you're up there, and and everything's coming Perfect. through great. One thing I always forget to do this, and then I always kick myself later because yeah. it actually does make a difference. If uh, if you're watching and you and you're enjoying the clinic, just throw a like on the video. You know, throw where you're watching from in the comments. It just helps more people find it. Um, it you'd be. I didn't really even get that when I started doing this, and I've looked at some of the numbers recently. I'm like, man, I should definitely keep saying that. So let's do the. Uh, the uh, stereotypical YouTube thing, but if you can like the video and if you're not subscribed, just click subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. just helps us out. So appreciate it, coach, and uh, looking forward to it. Thanks. Yeah, let's get on to it. Here we go. So bunch formation right here. The Why the bunch? So the way that I like to define the bunch really in a general uh, definition is really like a, con a condensed group of three eligible offensive players. Um, the bunch is going to consist of a point player, a slot player, an exterior player, and uh, honestly, within football, you can have all different types of personnel within the bunch if you want to. Uh, you can have different variations. And uh, honestly, try to be as creative as possibly as you can with the bunch. I'm going to show you a slide pretty soon here with, uh, you know, the split alignments. Um, and split alignments, the one split alignment that I'm going to show you is not necessarily 
the only way to go. Uh, there's different splits that you can have with those three eligible offensive players within the bunch. It all depends on your your, your personnel and your play type. Um, uh, but again, uh, it's going to be a little bit different from team to team. Uh, we're going to talk, I'm going to show, and I'm not necessarily going to talk, I'm going to go a little bit too much into detail about the wide bunch, but I'm going to show a couple of clips of the wide bunch as well. Um, the one thing about the bunch as well that you can do with it, uh, you can be static uh, within the bunch or you can be dynamic. I know that uh, in American ball, uh, most often you're going to be more static. You can shift to a bunch. Uh, which will uh, create communication for the defensive side of the ball. Uh, however, up here in Canada, we can be uh, as dynamic as we want to be uh, before the snap. So it's, it does give us an, uh, an extra bonus and an added uh, advantage, that's for sure. Uh, I do believe that uh, the bunch uh, does help us out to uh, manipu manipulate the defense a little bit. Uh, it helps us uh, to create different exchanges and switch releases. Uh, and that really does force the defense to communicate and uh, it creates, creates a lot of strain on, on, uh, on coverages, that's for sure. So what I'm going to do right here, the, the diagram that I'm showing you right now, pretty much here in this uh, slide, uh, is just one of the ways that we ran the bunch within our spring camp. So uh, honestly, this is our typical bunch. Uh, it's a tight bunch right here where the point is basically uh, two to three yards away from the tackle. Well, I like to say three yards. Um, and yeah, at the beginning, when we introduced the bunch, I like for our receivers, uh, the slot and the exterior receiver, I like for them to be more so static, just to understand the bunch. It's such a, a, a new formation for younger players that they just don't understand the condensed splits. And so uh, I don't, there's a lot of receivers that are, are really uh, used to being close to that close to the box as well. So uh, I want to get them used to. Uh, the defensive side when they're aligned in their bunch. But however, most often we are uh, dynamic with our slot right here and our exterior receiver. Our point is the eligible receiver that is going to close the line of scrimmage. When he does uh, place himself on the line of scrimmage, it's really important to declare to the referee that he is on the line of scrimmage. So the, the next couple of clips that I'm going to show you, not necessarily plays. I'm not going to go too much into detail on the plays. I'm going to show you more so the structure, uh, show you different ways that uh, our team has run bunch uh, in the last three years. Um, I'll kind of just talk about certain plays that we ran out of them. I want to be really as general and fast as I can possibly be without using my time. So the first way, uh, the typical condensed bunch that you see right here, we're in a, uh, I'll call it 11 personnel, if that helps out everybody. Uh, we do have a fullback right here. The slot receiver is our fullback and he is in a base stance right here. Uh, so this is, you know, our general bunch formation. And basically off this play, what we did right here was just a show pass, uh, a seven man protection, full line slide. We had our two guys out of the bunch. So uh, the point player and the exterior guys right here, they're doing double posts and they're switch releasing the double posts right here. And we got a cross, uh, cross country route coming from the other side of the formation. Our quarterback right here is just going to escape. He's going to prolong his time in the pocket right here to get to that cr cross country route. A concept that we do uh, see a lot uh, in the NFL. Uh, I think it's really popular. Another way that you can kind of run bunch right here is out of a four by one structure. Uh, in 2019, our first game of the season right here against Laval, uh, we are in four by one with our fullback uh, being the most inside slot receiver. Here's our exterior guy of the bunch. And we do have a detached wide out from the bunch as well in this four by one bunch. Uh, I think four by one kind of um, creates the defense or causes the defense to communicate more. But if you add a bunch to that, to that four receiver side, I think it create a little bit more communication. That's for sure. So uh, what we did out of this play right here is just a, a sprint out to the left. And we had a flood concept going into the, to the field. Unfortunately, we, our quarterback doesn't bring his left shoulder into the throw. He uh, doesn't put his left shoulder to his target right here. And the ball is just a little bit off, but we do have some, uh, open receivers right here uh, into our concept right here. So uh, it was something that was beneficial to us in the 2019 season. And I think it's something that can be beneficial to you guys if you want to have four by one bunch, you know, uh, four by one bunch. Uh, defense is what they typically do is they'd like to count the eligible receivers. They'll count one, two, six. Uh, and sometimes there are defenses that don't HBR the boundary halfback to the four receiver side. And so I think you can kind of uh, create some advantages to that four receiver side with the bunch. 
Another way, which is a little bit more exotic, this is a, a Jacques Chapelain special, I'll say it like that. Um, we're gonna get our receivers to kind of start in a wider bunch uh, and we're gonna create movement right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our slot back into the boundary that yeah, he's gonna move yeah, all the way to become number one to the field side. And we're actually gonna ask the bunch players to move laterally or horizontally on the line of scrimmage, okay, to be tighter to the line of scrimmage. What does that do? Well, it forces the defense to communicate who is going to pick up this receiver is going to become number one. What I see from the States right now is uh, a lot of teams like to use motion. And one motion that is becoming heavily popular right now is to have a slot from the boundary side who motions himself all the way out to the field side to become the number one receiver. And so they want to see how the defense is going to communicate. And it's something that we like to use. Um, we used it against Montreal in 2019 when we won our game. What you're going to see right here is just the typical zone read, okay? A typical zone read right here where the exterior player from the bunch right here, he's going to slip across the formation to go right into the flat. We're going to zone read the defensive end. He plays a little bit too tight for our liking. We get it out there to the flat right away. So, yeah, motion. I love it. Uh, it can be a blessing and a curse, however. Uh, if you have a quarterback that's smart, uh, and understands the structure of the formation and how the defense is going to move with the formation. Uh, you're in good business. However, if he doesn't understand that, it can be a little bit difficult for the young quarterback. So uh, if you got these big motions within your offensive formation, I would suggest that you keep it more so just eye candy rather than a, 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 an elaborate route scheme or whatever. Uh, keep it simple for the young kid. What we got right here right now is a wide bunch. So our wide bunch right here, where now our point is basically two yards outside of that far hash. Okay, so we had a little freeze cadence right here. Our quarterback is going to change the play right there because he did see pressure coming up from the interior from the box. Okay, and at the last clinic that I presented on, I spoke about Zephyr. Uh, and we're going to run Zephyr out of the bunch with three receivers. So what you're going to see right here is our point. Basically, it's him that's going to go right into the side. He's going to dive release, go right into the inside right here to run a diagonal route. We're going to have our most inside receiver, who is the slot receiver right here. He's going to basically going to wrap around the point right now. He's going to get vertical. And then our outside guy, the exterior receiver, he's the one that's going to slant inside and we're going to throw him the ball. He's going to stay underneath all those routes right there. I would have liked the ball just to be a little bit more inside. The receiver has to adjust just too much right here. And he goes down to the ground. I would have liked for him to stay on his feet. And I believe this is the final clip right here. Uh, so just going along with that moving bunch that we did see two clips ago, uh, we do have a, another bunch right here, uh, a wide bunch. Uh, that's going to move in slight words. It's not going to be as close as the last one. So they're going to move in uh, laterally inside to get inside, uh, to get to the landmark where the point is now outside of the hash. Okay? And we're going to have another zone replay right here where we're going to have a concept with a snag route from this receiver. And then a flood concept, basically, with the outside receivers right here. So our quarterback is going to just sling it out here to uh, Louis Chauve, who's going to get the nice big pickup for us in this game. So, again, big time movement. What we like to call our bunches, um, I'll be honest with you, I have no problem sharing your terminology at all or anything like that. So our, when we say bunch, our bunch is basically our tight bunch. Uh, and what we call our wide bunch, we call it a star. Okay, So a star is going to be a little bit wider. Uh, if we want those bunches to move uh, laterally, we say herd. A herd is when a, a bunch moves to become within its original split. So the, the general condensed bunch uh, that we saw two clips ago, uh, a moving star is a comet. So we call that a comet for us. All right, so I'm gonna speak a little bit about you know, the, the, the bonus of the bunch, but I have to give you a little bit of context right here. And so uh, within our playbook documents, this is what we show our players. Uh, so basically these are our offensive linemen splits, their general splits, uh, some of the defensive techniques that you see in front of them as well, uh, along with the possible tight ends that we can add to uh, our offensive linemen. Uh, as you will see right here, yeah, how we like to uh, label our gaps to the field, we say A, B, C, D. Uh, to the boundary, we say A minus, B minus, C minus, and D minus right here. 
Uh, don't judge me. Yes, I'm one of those coaches that likes to say seven, six, nine right here. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I know that there's a heated debate on that. I just find that our head up techniques are always even techniques. I know it's easy to say, but why not call it six I, six nine, or six seven? I know, I get it. I just this is the way I was taught and the way that I do things. So uh, please reserve your judgment. But just keeping in line with here with all those gaps right there. So A, B, C, D. Now, when we add the bunch right here, now we're basically adding more gaps. Okay. So uh, you're basically adding more tight ends. And depending on your personnel, those condensed players are basically, they can be better athletes if you want to. They can be uh, more so fullbacks. I could be another uh, offensive lineman if you want to as well. So based off the diagram that you see right here, okay, we have A, B, C. And then we have D, E, okay? And then even F it outside of the exterior player. I'm just going to minimize the screen right here. So the F player is basically outside of the exterior bunch player right there as well. Our general alignment when we call bunch, the con condensed bunch, the one that you see on your screen right here, the point player right here is basically three yards away from the tackle. Uh, the most inside the slot player right here, uh, when he releases, if he releases between the point and the tackle, uh, we like for him to be in a one-by-one -one relationship with the point and the tackle. Uh, our exterior player on the outside right here, we like for him to be two yards. We like for him to cross the line of scrimmage uh, being two yards away from the point. Why? Uh, a lot of defenses will have a, will, um, yeah, they'll tell the defender to press the point. Uh, so you'll see a halfback or a Sam linebacker that'll press the point right here. And so that'll create a collision. And we want to just give this outside guy just a little bit of some space to kind of maneuver uh, if he does run a concept or anything like that. Any questions so far, Coach? Uh, no, uh, no, nothing so far in the chat. Let me just double check here. I pulled yeah. it back up. Um, nothing so far in the chat. I think the, the spacing comment is so critical, like being really definitive. It's so easy for receivers to be, you know, who are out on, especially on a big Canadian field, there's a lot of space. Sometimes a yard or two in their split, if they're in a normal split, might not be perfect, but it might not matter. Whereas if they're once they're in a bunch, if they're a yard too close to somebody or a yard too far away from somebody, you know, it really changes that uh, that relationship. So I think that's one yeah. thing, especially with with high school guys, that's critical, especially when you get into the tight bunch, because you want to make sure those guys have have room, but you're also running the tight bunch for a reason. You don't want it yeah. to drift out, you know, away from that. And uh, you know, one thing that I've I've never had to defend is when they actually move the bunch. So that's, that's now on my, I have a, I have a tab on my computer called problems and it's all things that I think my, you know, defense would be an issue. Right. So the bunch that moves is now officially in the problems tab. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. It can definitely help you out to create certain leverages, uh, make the yeah. defense communicate for sure. So it's, it's interesting. It does take any kind of motion will take a little bit more time to work, make sure that, you know, people are all, all are all on the same page and, uh, and that all the releases are clean. So I'm going to get into uh, two run plays right here. Uh, fairly simple run plays, plays that we most, of, that I think we know have really well. However, um, just ways that you can kind of do them into the bunch and they kind of play off each other a little bit as well. Uh, so uh, the first play that I'm going to talk about is duo. Um, duo is a <laughs> popular play uh, everywhere in football right now. I think everybody's running it. Um, I think it's such a dynamic play and it just helps your run game so much. It was one of our best plays last year. Uh, so uh, it's one of those plays, honestly, uh, especially with here in Canada, uh, with the yard, the buffer between the defensive lineman and the offensive lineman, it just really helps the run game because it helped, it works against defensive, in my opinion, defensive rules. I think a lot of defensive coordinators like to throw out uh, or throw or kind of say all the time, uh, flow to flow away when they're, when they're speaking to their uh, players. And I like to call duo basically a false inside zone. And so I think that when, you know, defensive linemen, when they see the low hats from uh, the offensive linemen, they want to play their gaps as best as they can. And so uh, it takes time to do that. And if you have a dynamic back uh, that does press his point as much as possible, and has a great read on uh, the second level defender. Uh, he can crease it for, you know, big yards. Uh, and so basically with uh, the bunch now, uh, what you're doing is you're adding more gaps. Um, 
what you typically want to do with the dual play. I'll kind of speak about what we do. Uh, you know, we can put our back in different alignments, that's for sure. Uh, the base play out of duo for us, we put him in a pistol alignment. Uh, we like to say to our back that he needs to press the uh, center's butt, okay? And he needs to read the first play side linebacker to his side. So it's you got to be really careful when you're explaining duo as well. Uh, play side is actually to the left, even though it may look like the arrows on the screen are to the right. Uh, we like to say that our backside is basically, it looks like it's the play side of the play, okay? Uh, what we say to our back right now is, you know, based off of uh, his first read, the second level defender, you're basically working off his direction. If he's going to be aggressive into the interior gaps, uh, you're going to bounce out play side. If he's going to try to loop outside uh, of the end man on the line of scrimmage, who is the quick defensive end, basically now you're thinking the interior gaps or uh, backside, which looks like play side to the defense at that given moment. The tailback, what we like to say to him as well, is to try to be aware of uh, unwanted penetration as well. So, yeah, at times, you know, there may be a defensive lineman that may be more physical than your offensive lineman. So we always try to say stay behind the blocks. Uh, I, I love the term that we use with our guys is hug the butts as much as we can uh, just to make sure that uh, they're not creating too much of a separation and they're not allowing uh, certain unblocked defenders to have better uh, tackling angles. With a bunch right here, what we do, um, duo uh, in itself, you want to create as many double teams as you can. Um, we always say to our offensive lineman and to our fullback, if it's a fullback that's blocking, we always say first level first. Uh, we want to control the line of scrimmage and we want to play on their side of the ball. Okay, So uh, our backs, our play side, I should say, I'm trying to refrain myself from saying play side, back side right now. But the left tackle right here, who is the play side tackle, uh, based off of the technique that we see play side. So if it's, that's, if it's a one technique, our play side tackle is going to secure the gap inside before backside rewinds on the defensive end right here, all while keeping his eyes on the second level defender, who is the tailback's first read. Okay? If this knows right here, this tech one plays a tech three, or he slants into this gap right here, now our double team is off. So we always give our fullback uh, the same aiming point, regardless of the type of block. So if it's a double team, we always say we want him to um, target an inside position to try to take over that inside position, keeping a good stance and trying to play on his side of the ball as best as we can. Uh, however, if there is a tech three or the tech one slants into the, the, the B gap, um, now our double team is off and now our fullback while targeting his inside position, he goes into find that position. Now he needs to adjust to his reaction. If his reaction is to stay outside of his block, he has to seal the block and now create the gap uh, for the tailback. However, if that defensive end is aggressive into the play and wants to flow with the direction of the offensive lineman, we like to wrench him inside and basically communicate with our back that, hey, it's best to bounce out play side. Now, with our bunch players and I myself being the offense coordinator of the University of Sherbrooke, but also uh, the uh, receivers coach, we spend a lot of time working uh, these, this block, this double team block on a pressing halfback on the point right here. Okay. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways how you can manage these two guys, the halfback and the third inside defender, which is the Sam. Normally with duo, uh, you're going to have some free hitters meaning that there's going to be some guys that we're not blocking. Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, 2021, when they won the Super Bowl, uh, their play that they, you know, won all the time was basically a uh, duo. You know, we saw Leonard Fournette uh, just absolutely destroy the duo play. And it puts really, uh, especially with a bunch and, you know, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers within their certain formation, it puts this cornerback really in an uncomfortable situation, uh, especially in the Canadian football game. I know that in the States, there are some defenders that are top run fits. Uh, however, in the Canadian football game, it's more so unlikely, uh, especially just with the width of the field. So uh, we want to leave the cornerback. We want him to be a free hitter. Um, we want to we want to have a one on one with our tailback and the cornerback, uh, especially not especially, but 
as well, that free safety is going to be another guy that's going to be a free hitter for us as well. We can MDM with our slot back if we want to. However, uh, in most instances, okay, we're going to leave the corner. So what kind of drew me to running duo out of the bunch? Well, in 2019, after our season, I started watching a little bit more college football. And there was this team that was called the LSU Tigers. Okay. And they were running this play nonstop, up tempo, just getting defenses off balance. And it just seemed like magic for them. And so they were running it out of the bunch as well. They had Thaddeus Moss, uh, Justin Jefferson. And I believe this is, I can't remember his name. It's not Marshall. It's either the guy that went to the Panthers. I think so. Yeah. Maybe Marshall. I think, I think that might be his yeah. last name. I'm not too it's sure. Funny, it's funny you say that. Cause I, I remember watching this film too. And I, and I went to watch it for all the past game air raid huh. stuff. And there was great. I mean, there's lots of great stuff there too, but I remembered seeing this as like, man, like they just make a living because right. you have to be in too high. You're covering those, right. those type of receivers, right? You're covering two guys that are already probably in the top 10 in the NFL. I don't watch enough to know, but you know, Jefferson and Chase are are definitely two of the best young receivers in the NFL, never mind at this level. And it just seemed like, man, they, they did such a good job out of this. It's funny that you, I didn't even know you. this was a, a clip you were going to bring up, but I remember watching. This is the first game of the year, I think, right? I believe so, yeah. This yeah. is probably one of the, I don't want to say the worst games, but yeah, this is one of the, the, the hardest games because obviously Texas is a valid opponent. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, you know, I, I would watch their games because they, they were just having this unbelievable season. And it just seemed like every time you would watch the TV angle, you would see a bunch and you would see an action in the backfield. And it seemed like Clyde Edwards Hilaire was just gashing plays, getting big yardage. And then a couple times off of this, and it's something that you can definitely do with the dual play as well, is RPO off of it as well. So, uh, <laughs> It's something that they just made a living off of. Joe Burrow just being stone cold as he is, just absolutely murdered it. I, you know, I love the up tempo off of it as well. It just seemed like it was, you know, I, I know that we call power God's play, but I just thought this is like God's play at this moment. And I saw yeah. it. No, for sure. And it's funny, like we, I, I've actually, you know, and I didn't, I didn't know it was called duo. And I didn't, yeah. you know, I was unaware of the the massive Twitter debate that begins as soon as you start talking about Inside Zone and Duo. But probably in like 2015, maybe at Laurier, we had two really good fullbacks and we were running a ton of Inside Zone. Right. And we were like, man, our, you know, teams are just hammering our Inside Zone. Like we run a lot of it right. and our linebackers are playing very downhill and right. their ends are trying to get inside of that scoop block on the backside. Like we need a play you know, to counter off this. Right. Um, and so we ended up, we, we, it, we called it power lock. Right. Basically we would use the second fullback, like the pulling guard. So right. we didn't run it out of a bunch with the guys aligned to right. that side. We would run it with a tight end. He would down block. Yep. And then we would, we would bring the fullback across right. and kind of kick out the next second yep. level player. Um, it ends up in the same. I mean, it's the exact same thing. The that, exact same uh, techniques that you use on the offensive line. Exactly. And, and exactly. it was just, as a, as a former offensive line, I was like, this is amazing. Now all these over-aggressive linebackers who are just a pain when you're trying to dig right. them out on inside zone, you know, now we're running, and we were already running power. So from a scheme standpoint, like, okay, guys, we're just pulling the fullback and locking the guard right. instead of pulling the guard and, and, you know, having some other method of handling the backside linebacker that that's one of the reasons why I think if you're coaching like JV or Bantam level football, this is an amazing play because right. corners can't tackle at, at the pro level. Sometimes right. certainly they're, you know, they're not saying that all corners can't tackle. I know some Laurier <laughs> guys probably mad at me if they're watching this, but you know, there's just usually right. Your Sam linebackers, a better tackler, your will right. linebackers, a better tackler, your halfbacks, even, you know, are, are traditionally better tacklers. Right. Um, even if that guy is a good tackler, he should be one of the one of the lower guys on the totem pole in terms of tackling on the defense. Right. So, you know, it's it is it is a really I think underutilized play up here until I think now it's starting to gain a little bit of traction. Um, yeah. But uh, no, it's 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 a staple of the teams that I've been on since. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I think. It's been a big staple here in Quebec. We've seen a lot of teams kind of take over on their kind of variation of it as well. So it's been a, it's been a good play. I know that us ourselves, we kind of, I don't want to say master the bunch, but we were 
you know, we kind of popularized a bunch out of it. So, and we kind of, you know, I kind of stole the idea of trying to do it up tempo as well. And it, it kind of helped us out in certain situations. Our first game of the season, we ran it out of the bunch right here. Uh, we're not going to get too many yards off this play right here, but basically I'm going to show you uh, what we did. So uh, we ran it out of 5R, so we're basically in 10 personnel. Uh, we have a receiver on the line of scrimmage who's basically controlling the, the defensive end. Uh, our tailback right here, we would like for him to scoop up. I'll, I'll show you the, the tight in a second right here. Our receivers do a good job right here in terms of booking the corner. We don't want to block him, especially at his depth right now. We don't care about him. Okay. Uh, all we do care about is the first level uh, and those guys that are in the bunch. Okay. So basically what, what happens here too with us, just kind of screw this around. Yeah. So basically we're getting guys in the same position right here. Okay. We're going to get guys. I would like for Will right here, try to win inside just a bit more than he can right here. If not, you get to wrench his, his body right into the inside of the play right now. Kind of get away with the play right here. This could be called for holding. How? However, uh, this was one of the first times that we ran it. And yeah, you know, it was decent for us. We ran it in certain, certain situations to kind of pick up a couple of yards. Uh, we wanted to get the defense off kilter from time to time as well and try to go up tempo off of it as well. Uh, however, when we started changing the backs alignment, that's when we started getting a little bit more production. So in our game against Laval, uh, what we did we put our bunch in there. We go up tempo. And what we did with our back is what we had him in a offset alignment, but we're going to invert his path. So basically we're going offensive lineman is running duo. Our play side is to the left side of the field, but our back right here is going to give us an action. Like he's running, you know, backside immediately from the path. So it looks different to the defense, especially with the will linebacker, who's going to uh, blitz off the edge right here uh, to him. He believes that our backside tackle is doing a turnout block. So now that makes him hesitate, okay? And so off that action right there, our tailback is doing a good job of pressing the center's butt, okay? There's another external pressure that's coming from the bunch side of the ball, but with his path being too wide, it doesn't allow him to make the play. And our, our bunch players are gonna do a really good job. I'm gonna show you on the, the tight angle pretty soon here, but we do, uh, we do manage to score off of this play right here. So the defense is going to line in an even front. What they're going to do is they're going to put the will linebacker outside and they're going to actually, what they did right here on this play, which is kind of interesting. Uh, they took the Sam linebacker right here, number seven, and they blitzed him outside of the bunch. So the bunch actually acts as like an, an elongated edge. <laughs> There's some teams from what I saw when they did send the Sam linebacker, is that they did not want to blitz them between uh, the slot player and the tackle or in another gap between the bunch players. They wanted to blitz them outside of the bunch, which is totally fine. Uh, I can understand that, you know, if we're running an, uh, an outside of a, a perimeter play to the, to the bunch side, uh, your guy is in a good position. However, based off what we see right here with seven and, and uh, I believe it's number 17 on the outside right there, they're going to add outside pressure, but their outside paths are too wide and they can't make the play. Our tailback does a good job outside of, of bouncing the play right here. And basically he gets into the end zone. What I really want to show you is how our receivers right here manage the double team on number 13. Okay. So they're working 13 to 36. 36 was their field corner, but with number seven who puts himself outside of the bunch, 36 becomes the new Sam linebacker. And so basically we're going to go first level first. We got two guys on this guy right here. And basically what's going to happen, Emilio does a good job right here, putting his hand out right there. And he washes, they wash everybody inside. And so it gives us a clear path to the outside. Number 20 is the free safety. Again, the free safety is a free hitter right here. We say, good luck, try to beat him, especially in this area of the field. And our tailback, who's a, a power runner, you know, he gave him his shoulder and got into the end zone. Against this team right here, we have our bunch into the boundary. Uh, we're backed up. At this given moment, uh, the defense is going to line in, in an even front. Uh, we do have a defender that's pressing the point. Uh, there's going to be a Sam linebacker right here, and then there's going to be your cornerback to the outside of the field right here. Okay. So uh, with our, that's a receiver. It's not necessarily a fullback. What we do see from the defensive end is he's in a stand-up two right here, base alignment. But what's going to happen off of this play, 
The play is going to roll down right here. We're going to have a nice little double team between the play side tackle and the slot player. Our point is going to drive the point defender inside of the play, and our exterior receiver is going to help to bring him down, but also to cover the edge right here. So now our tailback does the same action. Okay, this was like an inverted mesh. And basically off of this right now, we're saying, okay, well, it's you against you. And so now our tailback does a good job of staircasing the defender and basically gets outside for a big game for us. So we'll see a better look right here. So 52 right here is the defensive end. 27 is the boundary halfback just playing the point. And 42 is the Sam linebacker. So what happens off the play right here? Just I'm just going to make you guys just concentrate right here on the point defender and the outside, uh, the point receiver, excuse me, and the exterior receiver is that they're bringing these two guys inside. Our outside receiver does a really good job of really sealing the edge right here. Basically, these blocks are communicating with our back. Hey, you need to bounce. You need to bounce out play side. 29 right there makes he falls for the inside move. and Basically, we're bounced out to the outside. And I found that can be a harder tackle for the edge guy because, like, the, like you said, with the back kind of coming off of the hip of that tight end, yeah. you know, they're kind of in a lot of space, and then there's so much space outside of them, right? right? It, it even though it's you know in this situation, like you think, okay, that guy's not out in space yet, but because you're at like the last line of defense, you know, that player coming outside in, you know, sometimes I find they turn their shoulders and you can run hard upfield. Right. That inside shoulder or here they overplay trying to take the space away and then they're able to get back outside. Right. So, you know, I think, I yeah. think, you know, that element of it too can be really challenging defensively as you get a guy that's not used to being in the run fit that often. Right. And then you're really isolating that player. Exactly. You know, at least usually they're used to working with somebody else out in space to try and, you know, reset where you want the defense to be. So it's, it's super challenging. I find. Right. No, exactly. So just to kind of show, a couple of ways that we kind of manage the defenders who um, uh, align against the bunch when we call our duo play. Uh, first and foremost, we have our, our H right here is our fullback. Uh, because there's a tech three right here, we're going to say that he's going he's gonna to go and get an inside position on the defensive end. If we are attacking a defense that likes to put a pressing defender against the point right here, and he's super aggressive, what we do, like we just saw from the last clip, is that we're going to go try to find an inside position. If we don't, we're going to wrench with the outside hand and, and drive him inside. Our Z is just going to be an outside presence just to make sure that everything's good. And then he's going to work up to the next level to go find the third inside defender while always leaving the cornerback unblocked of that play. Now, another way that we do it, and I think this is probably the hardest way, uh, however, I do have some good clips of it as well from LSU. Um, the point defender, he succeeds in winning inside. The Z receiver right now, he needs to go find the same position, the inside position, and he's basically going to communicate with his teammate and give him just a shoulder push right here to tell him, hey, go to the next level to go find. I'm going to take over your block. So that's another way that we uh, teach our guys this block. Another way, which is really interesting, uh, however, I think you need to have a wider bunch when you're doing it. So now your, your Y is probably going to be about, I would say, four, three, four yards. I would say that the, the techniques that I just explained, maybe those bunches are a little bit tighter. Uh, however, this right here is interesting in itself. Uh, you could have your exterior receiver who wraps himself inside of the point defender's block to go up to the next level to go block that third inside guy. So if you play against teams where basically the pressing defender who, the, the defender who presses the point, if he's going to press that guy, believing that it's always going to be a pass and try to reroute or disturb his route, well, hey, we're going to win inside every time and we're going to have enough space behind us to allow the Z receiver to basically insert himself between the block of the H right here and the Y to go up to the next level to find an inside position on that guy. And then finally, uh, when defenses play uh, with a, I call this more so like a, um, a triangle, uh, this kind of structured defense right here, which typically is a zone style of defense to play against the bunch. Uh, basically, we're saying, okay, well, we're taking MDM while working up to our defender. We need to put ourselves, I call it a position of power to make sure that we're in a 
good position to block those guys. We can't be in a position of speed to go block those guys. We can't. We have to be under control uh, while we're blocking in space. Now we say MDM with the Z receiver if the cornerback is more aggressive than the halfback, that's for sure. So a couple of good examples right here from LSU. Uh, like I said, Justin Jefferson, I believe this is Marshall. Um, they're going to go work together on this guy who comes down into the bunch. So again, the defense is not ready against the up-tempo offense. So we see Justin Jefferson. He goes and wins an inside position. Number six is going to communicate with him. Justin Jefferson does a good job of keeping an inside hand on the guy right there. And basically, uh, number six right here, Marshall, is going to take over his block right there. Now, again, like you had mentioned, Jackson, those teams, those defenses that play too high defenses, you know, the corner, if he plays a lot outside of the bunch, okay, the Sam linebacker is the guy that presses the bunch in the States, and your free safety is high, well, shoot, you got a lot of room. So there's a lot of space to run, a lot of space to, to go gain yards. And with Clyde edwards Hilaire, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> so you see right here against, I, I believe this is Georgia Southern. It's not a really a, a great opponent. However, I do believe that there's some good examples here. Slide this over, excuse me. Right here, just to the left side, our exterior receiver is just hidden right there. But we're going to see just a nice good example again of Justin Jefferson and Marshall right here, double teaming. We see Justin Jefferson going up to the next level to go pick up the free safety, and that's a really nice job. In Canada, it's a little bit different. The third inside defender is going to be the Sam linebacker. Um, the defense, a defense can play with too high with cover downs across the board. However, you're going to have a five-man box in that given in that given scenario. Arkansas right here. So they did the technique, the wrapping technique, where number 16, what he's going to do is basically he's going to go insert himself between 87 and 19's block. So based off, oops, excuse me. So based off of this, what we're going to see, 87 is going to go find his target right there, and we're going to see 16 go inside right now. Now, the tailback does get a read right here based off of his read to go stay basically in the internal gaps or basically backside of the dual play at this given moment. I do believe that I have another example, yes. So again, we're going to see that wrap technique. So basically the defense is hurrying himself, hurrying itself to align against the offensive formation. We see 87 right here is going to win inside. 16 is trying to find his responsibility. We're going to see he's going to go up to the next level and try to go find some work. So not necessarily looking at the play itself or the success of the play. I'm more so looking at basically the guys in the bunch right now. We did get a one question there, Coach, talking about uh, up front um, before we get to the pin and pull here. Um, if you've got a one tech to the play side and a three yep. tech to the back side and you get that three tech spiking back into the yep. uh, what would be like the weak side A gap in this yep. case, um, how do you teach the center to handle that? Because um, obviously he's engaged with, with the, uh, the boundary guard or the, the, the play side guard, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you, do you teach them to like, you know, kind of have an eye in that a gap as well yeah, sure. or, or what's the coaching point there? Yeah. We're not, we're not so invested necessarily. We do have a little bit of some inside zone principles within our dual play. I'll say it like that, especially with the, uh, the yard, uh, here in the Canadian football game. I think that, uh, in American football, you can be, you can be more so invested into that guy, even if he does slant inside or outside, wherever he's going, whatever gap he's going into. However, in the Canadian football game, you do you do need to kind of secure the gap before basically giving that backside rewind check. So if our center was playing against the nose, um, if it was an odd front, and basically he slanted into his, uh, it would be his backside A in that given scenario, he would basically check play side to his gap before going backside rewind. Our guard and that, there would, it would create a double team block between the center and to what it would look like would be the place or the backside guard, but it's essentially the play side guard in that given sense. The next play that's, you know, commonly run out of the bunch is a pin and pull. Uh, I think the pin and pull, what helps with that is uh, first and foremost, I just think that the presence of the bunch kind of spooks out defensive ends in itself. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, having that, that point, 
uh, the point player within the bunch, if he comes and cracks down on the defensive end, uh, you can really dent the play side of this play. And you can get, you can get guys uh, into uh, certain alleys to go block in space. So pin and pull for us right here off of our scheme and how we run it typically is that, yeah, we're going to have out of the bunch, the point player, which is the number two right here. He's going to go and crack down on the defensive end. I'm going to give you guys a little nugget uh, with pin and pull and how uh, your point player when cracking the defensive end is going to, how, how he should approach the block. Uh, but I'm just going to get to that in a second right there. One, Our, one question. Sorry, side. coach. We just got yeah. another one on the duo and it's talking kind of about that. Do you ever double the end out of the bunch instead of, you know, instead of um, or, or, you know, instead of maybe you would chip off of it as well. Um, you talked about the different options on the backside, but do you ever just double the end and work that through to uh, the backer with another member in the bunch? Yeah, well, that would depend on like play side for us. If it was a play side one technique, we would do that. So our yeah. most commonly, again, like, I don't know if the, that guy's going to slant into the B gap or not, but most commonly, yeah, if, if, if there's no presence, if there's no immediate presence in the B gap, yeah, our back, again, I'm trying to refrain myself from saying backside, but it's not backside. It's the play side tackle of the dual play. What he's going to do is he's basically going to secure the gap inside before giving a check rewind with the shoulder on that guy. And basically now the play side tackle and our fullback, the most interior guy, the slot, uh, the slot player within the bunch, they're basically doubling, double teaming that guy to they're a linebacker, which if it was a 4-2 defense, it would be uh, with the diagrams that I showed you, the will linebacker. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Awesome. And and what, I'm not sure if we'll talk about, we got another question already on the pin. And pin. <laughs> it's all good, for sure. Um, it, whether you guys teach skip pull or square pull. Yeah, for us, it would be a skip pull. So we do skip pull uh, most often. We like our guys – uh, especially our offensive linemen, if there, if there's an alley that's created, we want them having a uh, a square approach into the block. So um, we more so, I, I believe that's the case for us. I think, you know, I I I, I want to say that we teach skip pull. I I we do have a veteran that does like a different style, and I just want to I don't want to eat my words too quickly. I do believe that you should give your guys the option to do both of them and so we i do believe that uh, coach Turp, offensive lineman coach he does do a good job of you know mentioning the two sorts of it uh however i would i'm pretty sure that we skip pull out of it uh and i again I, i'm going to show you some video on it but i'm not too sure i got skip pull we skip pull when we do our counter play so i just want to make sure that, that, that as well so that's a good question i got to check with the player pretty soon here but i'm just going to continue off of this and just talk about the bunch players and how uh how they block uh, rather than the offensive lineman right now. So, yeah, the point right here is going to crack down on the defensive end, the end men on the line of scrimmage. If there's a uh, pressing defender against the point player, uh, we're going to have another crack down on that block right there. Our most inside, the slot player right here, who is our H player, he's basically going to kick out the cornerback, the outside. That's the force defender right there. And we're going to create an alley for our tackle. Now, with the front that we see right here, uh, yeah, our – Backside players right here are working outside zone angles. Uh, however, that can change uh, based on game plan and what we want to do. What we see right here from this 4-2 uh, strong, uh, we can tell this left guard right here to down, and we can tell our center to go as well if you want to as well. The play does become a little bit more buck sweepish, uh, but I think uh, getting guys in space and just creating more flow uh, just kind of helps out the play in itself. However, last year, what we did is we worked just the, a, a one man uh, pull right here with ourselves. So here is the moment of truth. Going to take our left tackle right here. So basically what we did against this team and uh, for the remainder of the season, this was our, I, th I want to say our, I think it was our second to last season game right here. Uh, we started putting offensive linemen in the bunch. So basically what we have right here is a fullback, number 48. Number 66 is an offensive lineman, and I have another receiver right here. So our point player is an offensive lineman right now. Okay. What we're going to see right here is basically 66. He's going to crack down on the defensive end. And basically 67, I believe 67 right here, he's not going to skip pull. He's going to regular pull off this play, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, as we see right here, he's going to regular pull. I know that 62 our veteran, our captain of our team, Anthony Van Dyle, he's more of a skip pull fan. So 
Uh, I know that uh, this player right here, who's no longer with us, um, he does a regular pull. And basically what we have off of this play is number 66 cracking down on the defensive end. Number eight is gonna crack down on the pressing defender. Okay, and then basically what we're gonna have is uh, our corner, our, our fullback right here, who's gonna go kick out the force. There's a new force right here with the Sam linebacker who screams outside. And basically our tackle right now is climbing up to that level. Just got a holding call right here from our point player. Um, so that was unfortunate. However, this was a play uh, within our arsenal last year. Now, a little nugget that I'll give you guys with the, the point player who cracks down on the defensive end. Now, this can be the point player. This can just be a guy coming in motion to come crack down on the defensive end. Uh, teach that player to key uh, the feet or the stance of the defensive end. Okay, what we say to our guys is if the near foot is back, if the near foot is back. So in this given scenario right here with 66, if this defender's near foot is back, okay, he has the ability to step towards you, okay? Kids, when they hear the word crack, often they, they just want to come in like a bat out of hell and they want, you know, this highlight block that they're going to put on their huddle highlight tape. Yeah, I, I get it. It's really, it's really appealing. However, I prefer to be in a better position uh, to help the overall play. Okay? So if that near foot is back, okay, he has the possibility to come and attack you. So just be aware of that. Now, if the near foot is up, okay, it's a little bit awkward for the defensive end to cross his feet to come towards you. So if the near foot is up, okay, his first step is going to be upfield. So within the timing of the play, that's at that given moment where you can be a little bit more aggressive into the block. So we ran this play against Laval. Uh, unfortunately, we did not win the game. However, the following week, uh, we aligned ourselves uh, basically in the same formation. So we have uh, our fullback right here, number 24. Uh, 66, again, is our point player. So 24 our slot, 66 our point player. We have an external receiver as well, okay? Now, what this team did, they recognized this formation. They probably recognized or anticipated the play that was coming. And what they did is they actually put the defensive end on top of the point. So there's a defensive end who's not aligned in a five technique. Right now, I don't want to say he's aligned in a six technique, because technically the sixth technique would be against the, the number 24 right here, the fullback. But right now he's head up with the point player. So he's really wide. Okay. And what we have off of that now is we see the will linebacker outside of him, the boundary halfback outside of him and another corner, which would be outside of the bunch as well. So there's a lot of defenders that are really cheating their alignment in anticipation for the pin and pull. Okay. And what we had did as we kind of anticipated that alignment, and we said to our quarterback, if this ever comes up, which it did, you're going to check us out of this play and you're going to check into duo. <laughs> so what had happened was basically, you're going to see right here, Zach, our quarterback, okay, at this given moment, he's talking to our offensive lineman and saying, hey, we're checking into duo right here. Our tailback just gets the confirmation right now. And basically what's going to happen right here is now, our fullback right here, who usually works in tandem with the play side tackle, okay, there's no presence within this gap. There's no presence within this gap, okay? Our point player now is going to become the seal blocker, okay? And now our fullback right here is just going to insert himself to go find work. And basically what we have off this play right here is we had our tailback in a pistol alignment. He comes down right here, and we're going to get a gain of 11 yards. We see the gap right there. We shoot it right away, and now we're getting upfield. So those two plays really work in tandem with each other, uh, especially with the bunch play. I'll say it like this, just kind of help go into the next phase of our discussion right now. I think most defenses believe that if you have a condensed formation like bunch or double tight ends, most oftenly the defensive coordinator will uh, express to his players that, hey, if those guys are condensed, they're running outside breaking routes or their play is going to be towards the outside, okay? which is not necessarily the case. Okay, you can find really good angles okay, with in-breaking routes okay, when you have a bunch. 
A lot of defenses, what they like to do is kind of bracket around the bunch okay, to make sure that they defend those outbreaking routes. And you can really find good angles to go and get vertical on those guys. And we'll show you a couple of examples. Are there, are there any questions, uh, Jackson, just uh, as of late? I'm just going to double check here. I, I was just on our uh, on our screen there. Uh, no, nothing after the skip pull box yeah. pull. Usually I get a notification, but yeah, nothing after the skip pull box pull. So, you know, during the confinement, when it was like the uh, – pandemic clinics were, were so sexy at the time and everybody was watching all the clinics online and whatnot. You know, I came across Lincoln Riley's uh, clinic and in his clinic, he had mentioned that if he had only one play to run, regardless of the situation, it would be mesh. And I'll be honest with you, I can agree completely with that because this play that we have right here works in any situation and has an answer for any type of coverage. So it's a really strong play for us. Okay. Here in Quebec, I can't speak for other provinces, but here in Quebec, um, mesh is really popular, but there is a certain way that teams run mesh. Okay. Um, they run mesh with a guy who is going to establish the over and he's going to set himself about six yards Another guy from the or another player from the other side of the formation is going to run underneath him, and there's going to be a dig route that's going to come over top of all those guys. And I, it's a great play; it works. However, I just found that within our level and then within lower levels as well, I just found that that dig route was never thrown. I had never seen it thrown. There's, it's really hard. It, you know, you're getting a lot of guys crossing over the middle of the field. There's a lot of jersey color from the defense that's crossing to the middle of the field, and it's really difficult. And so uh, what I had learned from Lincoln Riley, uh, Mike Leach, uh, they have a certain type of mesh, which they like to call snake. And this type of mesh is when two receivers cross each other over to the middle of the field, but there's no adjustments. It's basically you're crossing over to the middle of the field and you're running. That's it. There's no, it's not the OG mesh from Mike Leach where the guys are crossing over and if there's grass, those guys are stopping. No, this is really like you guys are crossing over to the middle of the field. But what does it need? It needs a route into the middle of the field, which Dan Casey and I would assume that a lot of uh, coaches like to call uh, an OTB route, which means over the ball. Okay, so what we have right here with our play out of the bunch is we're going to have our point player right here. It's him that's going to run the over routes. Okay, we're going to have the slot player who's going to run the OTB. We're going to have a skinny post from number one. Uh, we're going to have our tailback right here who's going to run a rail route. Uh, a rail route looks like a wheel route. Uh, however, it's not necessarily the same thing. I like to call it a sloppy swing route. Um, the ball can be really thrown at any given moment. Uh, but again, what I like to say to our guys is that it's a really ugly sling, a swing route where you're working towards uh, the line of scrimmage. To the field side, we have our under route from number two and number one right here. Basically, what he's going to do is he's going to run a speed cut out with the possibility to convert uh, to run an MOR fade against a outside cap or inside press. Okay. How we like to read it, there's multiple ways. And it just it's always just based off the defense, really. What we like to say is that if there's a single high defender, what we like to do is we like to start our eyes on the outside and work ourselves in. So... Uh, you can start to the outside to the rail route. Uh, and basically what's going to happen right here is this guy's going to run a rail route. And with all the vertical routes from the bunch right here, this creates such a natural pick if it's a linebacker that's trying to cover this route. And so it's really, 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 really productive for us. And so we work this route first. We come down to the under route and then we work the OTB. There might be a possibility to work right here to the outside. However, this is a five-man protection for us, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. Now, we can change the read as well if you want to with a single high. We can start to the right side of the field and work inwards as well. So we can start with the – we like to call this route a throw, which you know, based off of softness. Uh, so if we see a single high in softness, we can start right here with number one. We can bring our eyes to the over route right now and then come to the OTB. So it's basically the same read but working one side of the field or the other side of the field. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, this is 
it's become a little more popular in the UA, this real concept in general, not necessarily at a bunch, but, uh, you know, I love, I love getting the back involved in the boundary. Like it just, I, I find that so challenging again, defensively right. um, and having, you know, that quick game answer to the field as well. Like if you're just getting, you know, off man or some kind of right. low half where you can just take that layup and not even have to bother right. reading through everything else. I, I, I really like this concept. The other, the other way that we do read it, and it kind of works off of uh, the R4 um, read progression uh, framework, our secondary progression, or you could say the uh, uh, read progression off of that is if we do get two high safety looks, which does happen often uh, in our conference, uh, we like to think of it as a quarter structure. And so basically what we do is we work high to low. So we'll start from the post and work to the OTB and then bring your eyes down to this route right here. So that's against the too high structure when we see that. So the first time that we ran it, uh, it was, I told the guys, I wanted them to, them to be static in the bunch. What's gonna happen right here is our defense right here, they're gonna be in a too high structure. Our quarterback is gonna do a good job of eliminating the post because this guy is capping the post immediately, okay? What happens right now is that the linebackers into the middle of the field, okay, they get sucked in by the mesh right here into the middle of the field. Our OTB is wide open. Okay? So highly productive. The one thing that you need to say to this guy right here, which is really important, your rail route. Okay? We say that once you cross the line of scrimmage, you look for the ball. If you don't have the ball, you keep running like a bat out of hell. Okay, Run like a bat out of hell because you need to force this defender vertical to give outside space for your under route. If that guy starts to slow down, that you're bringing two guys within this space and it's not gonna be productive for us. You're gonna see a little bit better off this angle, the OTB that's gonna come into the, the camera. Protection's good, get over to the middle of the field, boom, there it is. The OTB is just a little bit more of a safer route. Don't get me wrong. I like the dig. I just find that you got to be really accurate to hit the dig on stride. The first time that we ran in the game, we get the same result. So our bunch is right here. We're going to have our point right here who's going to go and be the over route. Our slot guy is going to go OTB. What we have right here is our, our post route right now that's getting vertical. He's capped because there's a single high defender right into the middle of the field. The linebackers stretch just enough with the mesh right here to give us something over to the middle of the field with their OTB. Now, what can happen as well, this team that we see, and this was kind of game plan because we knew that they played uh, this sort of way. We knew that if they gave us a cover zone look with no free safeties, we knew that they tried to switch routes out of cover zero. Okay, so having said that, with a bunch, okay, it's a little bit difficult to switch routes out of a bunch. And so what we said is that if you go to cover zero look, there's a possibility that we can hit the post route over the middle of the field. And so what we're going to see right now is basically our rail route is going to get outside. We're going to see the corner. He sees the presence from the back and he starts widening himself. Okay. With the two routes that start going inside, so the over route and basically the OTB, our post route pops wide open. And so there's nobody there to cover it, and we get a nice touchdown off of it. So what we'll see from this angle is basically the defense trying to communicate. So our bunch right here. We see Kev right here does a nice little job of a nice little spray release outside. We see this defender and number five go inside. And basically our quarterback does a really good job of getting the ball vertical over the field. I was, I'll say this. I know that there's a couple of offensive linemen coaches in the group right here. We have five-man protection right here. Uh, you're going to see a really great example of a squeeze technique. So basically what's going to happen is we got our Mac linebacker who's presenting himself into the A-gap strong. Our Will linebacker who's presenting himself into the C-gap. Okay. And so basically, they're going to send six. And what we're going to see from our left tackle right here is a great job of a squeeze technique while leaving the most outside defender completely free. Our quarterback does a great job of throwing off platform, that's for sure. A nice little fadeaway throw, but we get a nice 
touchdown off of it. Especially with the back releasing to the field there, like it's so hard to get, you know, you're, you've got your rules between how you cover the back out of the backfield combined with your rules about, okay, how does that change if it's in bunch, right? right? And especially that tight bunch, you know, there's very little time for the defense to recognize, like basically as soon as the back's out, he's involved in the bunch. Yeah. Um, and that's another one, you know, tough, tough. If you're trying to have the backer from the inside, carry him on the wheel, that right. guy has terrible leverage. But if you're going to switch it, now you need to work a three-way, you know, some sort of three-way switch because really your corner or whoever is the outside guy has to take the wheel yeah. if you're going to switch it. And so then you just end up in a nightmare situation where say your Sam line, your, I mean, really it could be your, your Sam, your Mike, your Sam linebacker and your field halfback are all going to switch. Well, I don't know how many times in Indy those three guys have lined up beside each other to pass that off. So yeah, um, it makes defending it in man super challenging. Right. No, for sure. We didn't really have a whole lot of chances within our season to hit the rail route against our defense late in the season where we had a little bit more some competitive periods. Uh, we're going to see the bunch to the left side. We see the quarterback sees that there's no free safety on this given play rate or on this given defensive structure. And basically what's going to happen is that there's three cover downs for the three guys of the bunch, but there's nobody going out with the tailback. So how we throw the ball to the tailback is like a dart. It's basically we're throwing this really fast, Hitting him right now as he crosses the line of scrimmage. He does a great job of catching the ball right there, and that's an easy game for us right there. That's, that's a, it was a great little play. It was a great reaction from our, our quarterback to get the ball fast into the hands of our tailback. Right. See a lot of pressure that's coming out right there. We got to get it out now. The defense sends seven. Uh, there's not a guy that peels off with the back of that given scenario as well couple of variations that you can do off of it, okay? So now we're going to see a little bit more movement, okay? This is something that we that we did in our bye week right here. So instead of having our back go and run the rail route right here, what we did is we told our slot guy right here that he's going to run the rail route. So basically now we have our point being the over. We're going to have an under from this guy right here. Our exterior guy right now, it's his job to go settle himself over – the middle of the ball to run the OTB. And what we see right here is basically a, a big gain right there as well. So I like that variation. Keeps the back in the backfield uh, a little bit more added protection that I give in scenario. Put the back more, to, more so to the field, uh, check release the field as well. So it's a nice I little would... tendency breaker too that the back's not lined up on the same side as the bunch. Right. So you're not, you're not like cueing that as a, as a potential tendency. Right. Another concept that we like to do off of the bunch was just a simple drive concept. Uh, drive concept is going to be um, basically a levels concept. You're going to have a shallow with a dig and a post. Um, we did have two digs out of this as well against certain teams. We eliminated the post and had another dig. Uh, however, uh, this is what a, a variation of the drive concept that we ran. Typically, drive concepts, play side will have an outbreaking concept like we see right here. Uh, however, um, they're basically having a sprinkler read coming back in, inside towards the inbreaking routes. So with this, you're going to see number one right here to the field, MOR fade. Number two is going to have a speed cut out. Possibility, we call this technique a tee up if there's an outside defender. Uh, the point of the bunch right here, he's going to go and get an inside release. He's going to go basic cut dig right here at 14 okay that's really important it's really important that he reaches his depth and it's really important that he basic cuts why with number one okay him he's running the shallow crosser if these two guys these two receivers right here this receiver and this receiver are stacked upon one another during the play you cannot you're basically eliminating your dig as an option you cannot throw him because he's being hidden behind the the, the, the shallow crosser. You want that dig to follow the shallow crosser from depth, okay? Because if there's a lot of defenders that flow with the shallow crosser, you're basically throwing the dig behind the defenders chasing the shallow crosser. Number three himself, he's running a uh, skinny post. Uh, and basically the read for us was a sprinkler type of read working from right to left. Now the quarterback did have uh, the option to eliminate the play side outbreaking concept and work basically the shallow cross dig post 
if he did not like the contour, the contour against the speed cut out. So what we're going to see against this team right here is now, I believe it's a, just a little slight variation. It's not the exact same thing that I drew on the last diagram. However, the point of the bunch is going to be the shallow crosser. The slot receiver right here on the inside, he's going to go and displace himself laterally before climbing vertically okay, to run his dig route. And so now we do have a good relationship between those two guys. We got a post route that's going vertical and there's no one covering the back right now. So our, tail, our quarterback did a good job of eliminating the speed cut out MOR fade right here because of his depth. And so now our quarterback is working this area of the field. First and foremost, what he sees is an attached defender. So he steps up in the pocket. The dig is not there because there's another extra added defender into the middle of the field. Okay, and the post is not there. So now he brings himself down to the check release swing. So talk about movement right now. Let's move into the bunch. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is we're going to have our guys move into the bunch right here. We're going to have rain, but from a stack alignment. So rain is a concept that I, I yeah, presented a couple months ago. So rain from a stack alignment. And what we're going to see from the bunch right here is basically the drive concept that I drew. So the point uh, receiver, he's getting vertical to run the basic cut dig. Our outside receiver right here, the exterior receiver, he's running the shallow crosser. Now, if they're going to play lock man, good luck to number 13 who's trying to play lock man on this guy right now. If this guy can get vertical faster, he can create uh, an obstacle for this guy who's trying to play man to man on him. And I believe this is just going to be, yeah. yeah. So we're going to move into this. This was our, our preparation for that play. So basically to the right side of the field, what we're going to have is the dig from the points. Shallow crosser from the outside guy right here and our most inside receiver right here, who is the slot receiver. He's going to displace himself laterally to get up vertically. And that's really important with bunch, with passing concepts. You have to really keep yourself within your split or within your alignment. You do not want to declare your hips or your shoulders too quickly. If you do that, that will influence defenders and they can start cheating their alignment and start overplaying where you're going. So basically off of this right here, a quarterback is gonna bring himself to the shallow cross right here off this play, just to get a nice little game. Now, if drive is too difficult, one play that we really like as well is just a simple stick spacing out of bunch. Okay, so what we do like to do, uh, we, 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 this is a quick game concept for us. Uh, the last two, the mesh and the drive concept were more so an intermediate passing game concepts right here so with what we have out of the stick uh, out of this concept here we're going to have our tailback that's going to go uh free release into the flat to the field an mor fade from the number one number two right here he's going to go target the inside shoulder of his covered down defender and he's going to establish himself at six yards out of the bunch our point basically what he's going to do is he's going to take an inside path and he's going to basically settle himself over the alignment of the guard okay Number three right here, the slot receiver, okay? He's going to displace himself laterally, get vertical, okay, to find himself in the void at six yards, okay? Number one right here is going to run basically a spray release out at six yards right here just to create spacing off of that play. And again, really important for this guy, like I just mentioned, if he comes from depth, which he can, it's really important that he keeps his alignment. He cannot start to declare his intentions outside of the point of the bunch to quickly at the snap of the ball what we teach our guys stay within the tackle and the point as long as possible and at the snap right here displace yourself laterally okay a little side sh shuffle or side step okay and get vertically to run basically a hitch route at success so on our training camp when we ran it the first time near the goal line sorry for the poking cat we'll come back we're going to have our tailback go right into the flat, 
stick concept right there. Okay, and how we teach this concept uh, is based off of the first linebacker play side or to the side of the free releasing back. If he's getting lateral with the free releasing back, we bring our eyes backside to the spacing concept, which we'll do. The spacing concept, which we'll see right here with these three receivers, okay? The point right here, Antoine, he's gonna establish himself basically in his alignment to get open. Will's gonna do a good job right here to displace himself vertically. And then he's going to go settle himself right there. But this is just too good of an option for us. What we see from this receiver right here is a nice spray release out, kind of widen everybody away from the inside receivers like he does. And basically, we got options with our spacing concept. See a better look from this angle. It's kind of a nice look from the bunch. So we'll kind of see right here this receiver. And now this receiver does not necessarily have to be in the stance all the time. Uh, you can put him in a, uh, a regular receiver stance or a slot back stance. Um, I would say that this is more so a fullback stance from this uh, alignment. However, this receiver is more so comfortable out of this stance. And what we see from his action right here, we call this a lateral displacement right here, just to kind of get outside of the framework of the points receiver right here, just to kind of create width. And again, what we see from the middle of the field is just too wide open for us and we have to take it down. In our game against Montreal, the first game of the season, we are, I believe the situation is third and two. What I see from right over here, yeah, third and two. Our tailback is going to go freely himself out to the flat. I would have liked the quarterback to stay field side because I do believe that the tailback is open now. Uh, however, the, the quarterback, what he did is uh, he stayed backside. He went backside to the spacing concept, and he's basically going to force the ball right to the middle of the field. It's right here to our point receiver for the first down uh if it were me like i would have noticed just the defender that is just so tight on this guy i don't don't get me wrong it's a very instinctive play from our quarterback and a receiver does a good job of, of catching the ball however i just love uh the slot receiver who widens himself to just get in the void so i believe that's such a great option for us at that given moment however we made a play it was a first down it was a lot harder than it needed to be. However, it was a good play for us. So that's a little bit more simpler. The read is very similar to a drive concept. Uh, however, uh, I, you know, I would use this concept a little bit more so at younger levels. You'll see right here, just the point right here, Emilio, he's going to establish himself basically a little bit too much inside, but it's not so bad. Yeah, and basically he's going to get the ball right there. Great job securing the ball. What I see from Will, right, however, is just the receiver that's wide open in the void right there. Thank you. I'm going to just finish it off with just a couple of defensive structures against the bunch and kind of just speak on that. Um, you know, most often what we see from uh, certain teams is that there's going to be a halfback that's going to press the point right here. Um, typically, when you see this alignment, so like an inverted triangle, uh, most often, Often, it's going to be a uh, man coverage. However, you can play different styles defensive with this. I know that there are uh, some defenses that press the point right here, and they'll play slide technique against the bunch. And basically, this guy can play outside and have this guy play the hook, the curl. Uh, I've seen – I'm just going to go to this diagram right now. I've seen defenses play uh, meg technique, which means man everywhere he goes. And basically, they're going to play match around it. Uh, typically, when you see this structure right now, uh, yeah, this is more so a zone structure in that given sense. So this guy would probably play a little bit more high. This guy will protect the flat presence. And then your Sam linebacker will either bracket inside or play hook to curl in that given sense. And then I've seen some defenses as well who played more so a box as well against that. However, it does create a void within the middle of the field. So, yeah, like I mentioned with the bunch, and I'll just finish it off right here. The bunch is a... Um, maybe underutilized formation. I, I do believe it's becoming more popular um, here in Canada and within the States as well. Uh, I think that a lot of people don't like to use it because they don't like teaching it. And that's fine. I think that, you know, go with what's more, most comfortable for you. I hope that um, all the listeners uh, learned or just, you know, took a little tidbit from the presentation today and uh, hopefully they can bring it back to the teams. Uh, the bunch Honestly, uh, it's, you're not limited 
uh, as to what you think. You can really do uh, any kind of possibilities with the bunch. Uh, you can do in-breaking concepts, out-breaking concepts, uh, interior run plays, exterior run plays. It's really up to you. So I like just be creative with you know what you can do and you know put your players in the best position possible. I'll yeah, stop my yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, super fun. Fun. Like, you know, for me, like it's funny you brought the LSU film. Like I had watched a bunch of that again during the pandemic, and and really like some of the stuff they they did out of it. I think it's really hard. Like when you feel good about the run fits, the coverages are tough. Right. And when you feel good about the coverages, the run fits are tough. Um, and you know, obviously everyone's got different plays in their offense. Like I mean, if you run one thing that we've done, you know, and Western kind of does it when they they motion a guy down and end up not necessarily in a bunch, but with three right. guys pretty adjacent to the line of scrimmage, is just running like power or power switch at the bunch. Right. It doesn't have to be duo, but whatever your you know, whatever your off tackle run scheme is, you know, right. it, it you can kind of use those guys as extra blockers. Not that you want to just throw guys at the line of scrimmage, no, not a plan, sure. but um, you know, I, I think that it's versatile that way. And then especially like if you're a team that runs some two back, you know, moving that fullback guy around yep. in the bunch or bringing him from somewhere else to the bunch or, right. you know, having him at the point of the bunch, like there's so much you can do there, which I think changes the defensive coordinator's perception of the formation, right? which is like, or, or you have three speed guys in the bunch. The, the one LSU thing that I still haven't done yet in my own practice that I loved. Uh, we ran it a bit in practice last year. We didn't get to play any games, but we did it a bit. And it was a nightmare was starting with a tight bunch to the field of the boundary, right? motioning someone out of the bunch. So right. you go back to like 32 or whatever right. with a stack and then bringing the running back in late. Yeah. to be a to run whatever route that interior guy would run you know that's that's brutal to defend as well again yeah. similar to some of the stuff that you showed where all of a sudden like an interior linebacker is having to relate to the dbs and play right. in those in those coverages schemes that they're trying to use there yeah. um you know i think it is super versatile and then you know the the pass game stuff what i liked about the pass game stuff you brought up is like that's a lot of concepts that people are already running right it's not like you know, you're not people, people who would look at this going, oh, like, you know, drive with a speed out on the front side. Like everyone's got some kind of variation of, yeah. you know, an out concept with drags coming across the field. Everyone's got, you know, some version of, you know, quick game, whether it's like the stick with the hooks you drew up as well, like similar in their offense. So right. obviously the sky's the limit without what else you can run, but that was an amazing breakdown coach. I got some stuff on my notepad that I'm going to, you know, definitely have in my back pocket going forward. So thanks again for doing that. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, no other questions. That's that's awesome. I was really, really, and I love the the bit on the different ways people defend it too, because I think that's something that at sometimes has driven me away from it. Is like I don't really know what the defense is going to do to this, right. and then they give you 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 run it and they run something you didn't expect, and then you're all like nervous about it. I think it comes back to like one thing I've been guilty of is you know if you want to do it, do it. Don't have it as this thing. Oh. It's going to work every time for you to for you sure. run it. Like you run lots of stuff that doesn't work, right? It's, right. it's just about trying to create different different leverages, different matchups, so that you have a better percentage of of being successful. So, um, you know that was that was a great ad too. So, thanks again, Coach. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everybody who tuned in. I know we haven't been as regular on here um, with with the live clinics and stuff, but anytime I can get uh, you know a really good guest to come on uh, or or do some stuff myself on here, I'm going to. There's uh, more stuff actually I'm going to do throughout the rest of the week. So thanks again, coach. Really, really appreciate it. And what I'll do is what I did last, uh, last time is I, uh, I downloaded all the documents and whatnot, and I put them on a, a, a Google drive. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that all the, the listeners, if you're, you know, if you're all up to it and whatnot, if you want to have that yeah. information as well, especially the video clips, I'll, I'll make you all editors and whatnot. You guys can download all the video and, and uh, all the diagrams that I did today as well. That's awesome. Thanks again, coach. Really, really appreciate your willingness to do that. And I'll make sure like in all our social media and in the, and in the uh, description of the video, there's, there's a link to that for people who are interested. So thanks again. I'm going to take us off the live stream here, but I uh, really appreciate it.